physiology of the decerebrate preparations. The decerebrate preparation was first done by Sir Charles Sillington and uh, it is it goes with his name it is known as a Serringtonian decerebration. The Serringtonian decerebration is the the mid collicular uh, sectioning and uh, examining the various uh, uh, the reflexes and other effects and uh, here is the uh, picture showing the cat and the, the uh, lesion uh, produced by the uh, serington. This topic gives us an important information about various uh, central nervous system lesions and especially those lesions which keep the hindbrain intact. Decerebrate pre preparations are also known as uh, uh, hindbrain preparations because uh, in this animal, if you, if you can just see here, hindbrain, that is the pons, uh, the medulla and the cerebellum are left intact. The understanding the, the various uh, functionalities of the nervous systems or neural elements. During that time, what they did, they took up the animals and removed the different parts of the brain at different levels. And see the effect in experimental animals. The most common animal used here for this study is the cat. Later on dates, the rats and other animals also came into existence. The manifestation in these experimental animals are then translated to the disease conditions of the human being. Whatever happens to the experimental animals, and they try to look into the uh, human beings and try to examine that. What are the various uh, animal preparations which have been described? I start from the lower end, that is a caudal end. So they're cutting the spinal cord below C4 because uh, the C4 and above, it will alter the respiratory effects hence uh, uh, it is difficult to difficult to sustain the animals and especially the c1 c2 and a uh, little higher above just uh, just about the medulla the respiratory arrest happens because uh, c4 is a diaphragmatic representation anything just above c4 what happens uh, a diaphragm is uh, not supplied all the uh, respiratory muscles go into paralysis, respiration arrest. So that means anything below C4, that is the spinal animal. We have detailed the spinal preparations in my earlier, one of the earlier lectures. Then comes the decerebrate preparation, the mid collicular. That means uh, the level between the uh, superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus a, a cut is made. And uh, when this cut is made, and this is known as a mid collicular, this red bar, the mid collicular section. Now, just below that, inferior to inferior colliculus, you can cut, and this is the low decerebrate preparation. Oh, in this low decerebrate preparation, you may get uh, some of the cerebellar inputs uh, entering into the brain. And uh, you cannot uh, do a uh, sectioning here in the pon pontine or ponto medullary regions because uh, this is the area of the uh, respiratory centers and other vital cardiovascular centers. So now it starts with a low decerebration. This is the red one is the classical uh, mid collicular uh, uh, sectioning. Then this blue one, blue bar is the Above, just above the superior colliculus, that is the high decerebration. Now, you, we have another sectioning wherein it is above the hypothalamus, above the hypothalamus, uh, below the uh, thalamus, so that this keeps the hypothalamus intact. This is a uh, another preparation. This is the hypothalamic preparation. Now, this blue line, above the blue line, it is the midbrain is intact. This is called a midbrain animal. The about anything about the uh, the blue line. Then we have these dotted lines. When they remove the entire uh, cortical element, 
that is a decorticate preparation. To name various preparations, decorticate preparation, this is the dotted line here, that is the uh, entire cortex is removed. The midbrain animal, this blue line, blue bar here, that is above the superior colliculus. And the decerebrate preparation, that is a hindbrain preparation, this is intact. And this is the level here, the red bar. And the decerebellate preparation, that is the, the cerebellar peduncles are cut. The superior, middle, and inferior cerebellar peduncles are cut. That is a decerebellate animal. And uh, this is the spinal animal uh, below uh, C4, uh, cervical four segment. Well, here, decerebrate preparation, the classical Serringtonian model, this is the one where uh, superior uh, uh, colliculus, uh, superior colliculus and inferior colliculus, in between there is a lesion, and this forms the, uh, this is called a decerebrate preparation, and this preparation also goes with the name of the Serington, also known as a classical sering, classical decerebration. And uh, uh, in fact, it preserves the hind limb. That is why also it is called a hind limb preparation. I already already described about this thing. Sir Charles Serrington performed the mid collicular sectioning in cats and examined the various effects on the neural reflexes. It goes with his name, Serringtonian decerebration and classical decerebration. This is what again this bar is the sectioning. What happens in when you cut these things? So what Serrington did, he took the cat, he anesthetized them. After giving anesthesia, he opened up the skull. He identified the superior colliculus and inferior colliculus. And he took the scalpel blade and sectioned the in between the uh, superior colliculus and uh, inferior colliculus. And then he closed it. And then he waited for the anesthetic effect to go away in this cat. And he studied uh, what happens in this animal. That is the uh, procedure. And this entire procedure is a very painstaking and very um, rather when you open the, uh, the skull and there will be a large amount of uh, blood and injury and all those things. Now in this preparation, I have, as I have already made, hindbrain remains intact. The signed brain composes of the, the pons, the medulla, and the cerebellum. Connections from the midbrain. This is midbrain here. A thalamus and a cortex. The entire cortex are missing, are absent. Such lesions are will happen in human beings, and that is called uncle herniation. This results from a large space occupying lesions in the cranium or within the cranial cavity. That is a large tumors, the hemorrhages, the stroke, abscesses in, in the inside the cranium. And what they do, they push the cerebral hemisphere uh, through the, the cerebellar tentorium. They push the, the weakness or the opening, cerebellar tentorium. They push that, and this is called uncle herniation. And this cerebellar tentorium, the, whatever the hernia is coming, it contains the third cranial nerve, and also sometimes it may contain the medulla and other parts. In that case, it, it becomes fatal. So to say, the decerebration in man occurs and it happens because of the uncle herniation it is rare because it is fatal before they come to the doctor they are dead only those persons with the mild the the men where the medulla and the vital centers are less affected now going further so after what i mentioned about the experiments of the serington he he cut, he cut the, he made that uh, scalpel blade and uh, they cut the inferior and uh, in between the inferior and uh, uh, superior colliculus and he closed it and he asked this, uh, allowed this cat to recover from the anesthetic effect. And when the cat recovered, it could not stand up on its own. It was breathing 
and uh, it was all right the maintaining of blood pressure and other things but uh, it manifested with the the tail was erect like this uh, see you can just see that and even this was is in opistoponus position the the entire uh, uh, the vertebral column is uh, extended hyper extended you have the limbs hyper extended you both see both the the fore limbs and the hind limbs are extended the tail and the head dorsif head is dorsiflexed tail is dorsiflexed something like a c you can just see that something like a c the back concave extreme hyperextension of the spine extreme hyperextension of the spine and this condition is known as a opistotonus uh, position and when he tried to place this cat it it could be placed on a table and uh, of course with a great effort he could make it to place to stand erect that means a, a caricature standing and uh, uh, in the event anything touching upon it it will fall down so this is a very peculiar because it cannot write itself it is the the investigator has to make it to stand just like a, a table uh, some uh, small table so they be these these are already uh, extended and they are just standing with a caricature standing what you see here and what he observed the decerebrate rigidity is seen in the anti gravity muscles that that the muscles which uh, which is support or which act against the gravity so they try to withstand the gravity they are affected so that means uh, uh, these uh, whatever the centers here which maintain the uh, gravitational aspects of the posture they are preserved the inhibitory effect or a suppressor effect on these things are not there so they become uh, rigid this that is called a decerebrate rigidity so that means a decerebrate rigidity is seen in anti gravity muscles mostly these anti gravity muscles are extensor group of muscles that is why you see the decerebrate rigidity in extensor muscles in addition the muscle tone in these animals was increased now now we see the the aspect here the effect of decerebration so lesion at a so this is the lesion here in this in this part in this part is the lesion here is the cut if you cut this thing this is a, a cortico reticular or cortico bulbar fibers that's from the cerebral cortex uh, to the brain stem especially the pons and the medulla cortico bulbar or cortico reticular fibers and these cortico bulbar and cortico reticular fibers they will project on to the extensor group of muscles extensor group of muscles which are working to maintain the gravity so that means the pontine this is the reticular system coming from the pons will have a facilitatory uh, input that is a excitatory input the the uh, the reticulospinal tract coming from the medulla will have an inhibitory effect net effect is the balance now what is happening these two are missing that means from the cerebral cortex they are not there so there is no excitation they become independent now so now this one the the excitatory reticular system of the pons receives input from the ascending ascending uh, pain pathways the anterior lateral anterior lateral anterior lateral sensations anterior lateral column sensations these are interlateral column sensations especially the spinothalamic tract they ascend up and they will send the the inhibit the, the excite these uh, uh, these fibers what happens this effect is uh, more pronounced here is one plus this plus is missing this plus is still there and that would increase the activity there and this minus is missing so that means there is more plus the anti gravity muscles are activated okay so now these anti gravity muscles these are gamma motor neurons supplying the anti gravity muscles this green one you can see when they reach 
the anti gravity muscles here they will the gamma motor neurons supply the muscle spindles which are located within the muscle and when these muscle spindles are activated they will uh, they will through the one a so that means they will be uh, sending information uh, through the one a uh, one a to the alpha motor neurons this is alpha motor neuron. This is alpha motor neuron, and through the one year, it will have an effect so that will produce the muscle contraction. And uh, you can just see that uh, this red one is the one year operant. And uh, when you cut the dorsal root, this whatever the effect of the green will be absent. Now, coming back, the second cerebral cortex directly have an input to the alpha motor neuron in the spinal cord, and that is lost. That is not there. There is no. Uh, there is no effect on the. Uh, that means uh, uh, the voluntary activity is not possible. He the the individual cannot uh, perform voluntary. That means a cat cannot move its limb uh, uh, by any any means. Only thing by reflexly only it can move. Then what is happening here? Another things. Cortico rubral fibers. Uh, the cortic the cortex sends inputs excitatory inputs to the red nucleus. And now this red nucleus uh, sends input uh, downward uh, to the alpha motor neuron. This is a flexor alpha motor neuron. This is a flexor alpha motor neuron. This is an extensor alpha motor neuron. So this, this sends input to the flexor alpha motor neuron. Now what happened? This flexor alpha motor neuron, uh, that rubral fibers, cortical rubral fibers, they will descend down uh, through the rubrospinal tract. They will also supply the the flexor group of muscles. This is a flexor group of muscle. This is the extensor alpha motor neuron. Okay, so now that is one thing. So that means these two are missing. The rubrospinal tract, corticospinal tract to the flexor muscles are missing. If the flexor muscles are missing, so these two are reciprocally innervated. So that means uh, they go unopposed. The extensor takes upper hand. You just see already this gamma motor neurons of the extensor group of muscles are activated and uh, the uh, alpha motor neurons of the flexor muscles are activated. Now, in that case, the uh, extensor muscles are not being opposed because, uh, because of the loss of uh, reciprocal inhibition. So this will be enhanced further. That will increase, the, that will produce the rigidity. Now, you, you see another important uh, structure that is coming from the vestibular nucleus to the, to the alpha motor neuron of the extensor muscles, vestibulospinal tract. That will be increased. So, this is increased. So, this is not cut. This is increased. Now, this is governed by the, the vestigial nucleus, uh, vestigial nucleus uh, uh, that, uh, that governs the vermis of the cerebellum. And uh, this is coming from the vestigial group. Okay, that is fine. Uh, that is intact. Now, we have the second, second neuron here in the red nucleus. Red nucleus receives the cerebellar inputs uh, from the, the dentate dentate or an interpositus uh, uh, nucleus so they will come here interpositus nucleus that is the intermediate uh, part of the cerebellum also the lateral part of the cerebellum they are also they are coming to the red nucleus and some part of the uh, thalamic inputs these things uh, are missing because they, that is happening above this uh, a level so this is in brief about the effect. So now uh, to, to summarize, loss of influence is from the corticospinal, rubrospinal, mesenchymo reticular writing reflexes, because uh, here is the midbrain, the writing reflexes, those reflexes are absent. Now what is intact? Pontospinal. This is pontospinal. What is intact? bulbospinal that is uh, uh, the me medulla and what is intact is the the vestibulospinal now we have the the gamma motor neurons of the extensors are activated the alpha motor neurons of the flexors are activated and uh, alpha motor neurons of the extensors are activated the extensors are, act are activated by two turns 
one by the gamma activation one by the vestibular system activation a uh, third by the activation by the the reciprocal uh, inhibitory effects because this is missing this is not inhibited the in reciprocal inhibition between the alpha and the gamma things that is uh, uh, what is happening here what that's what i have listed <laughs> Now, the cause of decerebrated. Now, th this is a very frequent uh, uh, question. What is the cause of decerebrated rigidity? I am trying. To, I, I was trying to explain that the cause of decerebrated rigidity is blockage of normally strong input uh, to the medullar reticular nuclei from the cortex, from the red nucleus, and the basal ganglia. Lacking this input, the medullary reticular inhibitor system become non-functional. Overactivity of the pontine excitatory system occurs and the rigidity develops. Rather, I would, I would tell for this reason, one increased uh, extensor gamma motor neuron activity number one, because uh, this extensor gamma motor neuron activity is coming from the pontine reticular system which is being activated by the pain fibers. The second, the activation of the alpha motor neurons, alpha motor neurons by the vestibulospinal tract. Third, by the lack of reciprocal inhibition from the flexor group of muscles, which are not receiving inputs from the rubrospinal and corticospinal tract. That makes it uh, more precise. Okay, so now this is uh, one of the thing. Again, we we see the the cause for the decerebrate rigidity here. The, this is the the neuroaxis uh, of the animals. The number one is known as what is called a suppressor area. This gives uh, inhibitory inhibitory output uh, uh, to these areas. So here are two areas. This is a pontine area which is excitatory to the spinal cord. The medullary area, which is inhibitory to the spinal cord, we saw. So now we have number one, cerebral cortex, that is having a, a suppressor activity over the basal ganglia. Then from the basal nuclei, basal nuclei also provides the uh, sub inhibitory effects uh, to to the red red nucleus uh, through the red nucleus and other ponto peduncular nucleus uh, to the pontine reticular system. That is the second point. The pontine ped peduncular system already, the pontine reticular system already I mentioned, it is positive. Now, number three is the cerebellum. Cerebellum have three, three things. One, the entry part of cerebellum. This is a posterior cerebellum. And uh, they are all having, uh, this is a vermis, uh, the vestigial, all are having an inhibitory input uh, to the uh, the reticular system, medullary reticular system, which is inhibitory. Then uh, sixth, also there is an inhibitory effect on the vestibular system. Uh, sixth is the vestibular system. This is what I have mentioned, cortico-bulbo-reticular, cortico-bulbo-reticular, cordato-spinal, cordato-spinal, that means I will add cordato-ponto-peduncular uh, uh, spinal that, uh, through the ponto-reticular system. Cerebellum bulbo reticular, cerebellum bulbo reticular, medullary reticulospinal, the medullary reticulospinal tract, the ponto reticulospinal, this five is a ponto reticular, then sixth is the vestibular spinal, vestibular. Decerebrate rigidity is due to the loss of suppressor activity from one and three, one and three to four. The suppressor activity of this thing is lost that means uh, it is a it's not uh, there and uh, no inhibition and that may increase number two two to five that two here minus this is decreased this is decreased so this gets uh, not this is not inhibited and the three to six three to six this one this is missing there is more activation of the vestibular system so these are the causes I have already explained in the first uh, slide uh, very lucidly. You just see that abolished after dorsal root sectioning. 
this is a dorsal root sectioning. So if this is abolished after dorsal root sectioning, what is happening? It is the gamma motor neuron which is activated, increases the 1A afferent activity, and it is activating the alpha motor neuron. And if I cut at this B level, it is lost. So this is one aspect. The second, injection of a local anesthetic to the motor nerve, abolished or diminished. So large diameter fibers are not affected by local anesthesia and small diameter fibers are blocked by the local anesthesia. Once they are blocked, it is as good as cutting the, cutting the nerve. So hence the reflex is abolished. Now, treatment with the chloropromogene. What is this chloropromogene drug? This chloropromogene decreases the gamma motor neuron activity at the, the medullary level. So this is the gamma motor neuron activity which is coming here. And this is chloropromogene acts here and decreases the gamma motor neuron activity. So that means uh, one, the dorsal root sectioning, that is one A afferent activity. And uh, anesthesia, blockage of the gamma motor neurons. And then third thing is the chloropromogene all favor, all favor the uh, gamma motor neuron activity. Then forcible flexion of the head increases the um, rigidity. So that means like this, if you flex, it increases the gamma motor neuron activity. So the rigidity is increased. In these animals, if you flex the head, it will the rigidity is much more. The stimulation of the descending tracts increases the gamma motor neuron activity and uh, increases the uh, increases the decerebrate rigidity. And uh, vestibulectomy and uh, vestibular nerve sectioning did not abolish the rigidity. So that means it is not uh, originating from the vestibulospinal tract. So it is primarily uh, by the uh, gamma motor neurons. Uh, gamma motor neurons. Uh, this one is the main determining factor, and these gamma motor neurons are responsible for the uh, rigidity, increased extensor rigidity. Now, physiological basis of the uh, the mid follicular uh, decerebrate rigidity increased gamma motor neuron activity by those results due to the loss of suppressor activity I've already mentioned from cortex and cerebellum on the medullary reticulospinal tract gamma motor neurons. That means that the excitatory gamma motor neurons are not uh, suppressed, and the basal ganglia pontopeduncular output is also suppressed. The cerebellar inhibitory output uh, to the which is coming to the uh, fore is also not there. So all these things uh, uh, favor the uh, the increase in the gamma motor neuron activity and uh, increasing the sensitivity of the uh, gamma motor neuron uh, alpha gamma loop. Now, then what happened? Uh, this was done in twenties uh, or twenty five. Uh, uh, during that time, the Sherrington, when Sherrington did, uh, there is a group of uh, scientists uh, who were not happy with the uh, the Sherringtonian uh, experiments. This uh, Pollock and Davis uh, in 1930, uh, they they were quite opposing uh, to the bloody experiments. I use the word uh, the bloody experiments performed by the Sherrington. They said that it was a lot large amount of injury, blood, and uh, whatever the results cannot be relied upon. What they did, they wanted to be smarter. They wanted to be smarter, and they said that, uh, well, uh, we, we can we can do without cutting the animal. Then what they did, they, they blocked or bilaterally, they ligated the carot internal carotid artery. And also the basilar artery. So that means the the in, the arterial input to the entire brain and brain stem is blocked. So bilateral ligation of the carotid artery and the basilar artery. So that means it it totally uh, knocks off the entire uh, uh, brain area. So ischem this is called ischemic decerebration. And produce a decerebration in these cats. And they were happy because it is a less bloody experiment. And they have to do everything in the neck, not in the uh, opening up the skull and uh, cutting the uh, section or making a section between the uh, inferior and the superior colliculus. And this exhibited features. That means limbs are hyperextended. 
the tail and head is dorsiflexed, back is concave and opistotonous position, caricature of standing that can be made to stand on our legs, on, the, on four legs, and the decerebrate rigidity in the anti-gravity muscles. Wonderful. They did that and they were very happy. However, when they observed for other features, they did not match with the classical uh, decerebration uh, performed by Sherrington. In that extent, uh, what they tried to see, they carefully observed, because uh, once they found that uh, they are not matching with the Sherringtonian uh, uh, decerebration, though they have a, a future, features are similar, but they are different from the classical uh, cerebration, decerebration. So now what they found, they found on post, uh, the autopsy of the animals was performed, they saw a large area of the anterior cerebellum was necrosed. Now, then they, they realized that, okay, so it is the cerebellum which is making the mischief, or it is the cerebellum which is trying to uh, create a, a, a difference. Then they repeated the experiments with intercollicular sectioning. So they, then they came back around uh, and performed the Sherrington's experiments. Then in the Sherrington's experiment, the anterior cerebellum was intact. Now they cut the intercollicular section. Then after cutting the intercollicular section, they allowed the animal to, to recover. Then they cooled the cerebellum, the anterior part of the cerebellum. And once, once they cooled the anterior part of the cerebellum, they found the features uh, similar to ischemic decerebration. Yes, then they were uh, thrilled. Yes, I say it is because of the cerebellum uh, playing a mischief. And uh, this is the cerebellum which is uh, turning around. Okay, so then uh, what they performed? Okay, then the cerebellum is connected with the vestibular system. So how the cooling of the anterior cerebellum should result in a loss of a, a classical picture into an ischemic picture. So in that situation, what they did, they did the vestibular nerectomy. The vestibular nerve was cut in these animals. And uh, they, they cut the, the vestibulectomy, or they, they destroyed the vestibulum. Sometimes uh, you can destroy the vestibulum, what is much easier. You put the animal in a, in a, a chamber and uh, rotate it. And once you rotate it, all those gelatinous membranes are uh, getting damaged with that stetoconia or the autoconia, and then uh, the vestibular system, all the autolith organs and the, the semicircular canals, they lose their uh, hair cells and their uh, whatever, all those things. Uh, so you have to uh, put the animals in a centrifuge, a large centrifuge, and rotate it uh, in such a way that uh, everything is destroyed. Okay, if the animal may have a different problems, that is uh, left to another another things. So, but they did that. But much easier is to do the neurectomy. When they performed the vestibular neurectomy or vestibulectomy, so that also disappeared. So that means they found that uh, the effect is mediated through the vestibular system. Now they performed uh, those. Uh, experiments that are done for a classical. So in case of ischemic decerebrate rigidity, it is not abolished by dorsal root sectioning. So dorsal root sectioning did not abolish. That means it is not uh, coming from the, the gamma motor neuron. That is one year discharge. Local anesthetic to motor nerve uh, did not abolish the rigidity. So local anesthetic here did not abolish. That means uh, the small diameter fibers are not blocked. So then uh, they, what they did, uh, they it treated with a chloropromazine, which decreased the gamma motor neuron activity that did not uh, diminish the rigidity. So that means uh, this did not affect. Forcible flexion of the head did not increase the rigidity because we know that the forcible flexion of the head increases the gamma motor neuron discharge. A stimulation of the descending tracts did not increase. Both of them increased the gamma motor neuron activity. Vestibulectomy and vestibular 
neurectomy abolish the rigidity so vestibulectomy so here this part they cut the vestibular uh, system was destroyed and the, these fibers were cut uh, so then it abolished so then uh, what they what they what they found what they found uh, is summarized here in this table the intercollicular and the ischemic decerebration the intercollicular dis uh, Decerebration and ischemic decerebration. That may be a question. Uh, I'm putting it in the table. The procedure is the mid collicular sectioning or intercollicular sectioning, and it is a surgery. It is uh, ischemic is a ligating bilateral carotid artery and basilar artery. That is the procedure. Now, the type of rigidity in case of a uh, mid collicular or a classical uh, rigidity is a gamma motor neuron, increased gamma motor neuron activity. Type activity in the ischemic is a alpha motor neuron, act increased alpha motor neuron activity. This alpha motor neuron activity is coming from the vestibulospinal uh, tract. Dorsal root sectioning abolished the intercollicular rigidity. And it did not abolish. Dorsal root carries the uh, gamma 1A alpha. These things are gamma motor neurons. When they are activated, uh, 1A fibers are going through the dorsal motor neuron. It was abolished in intercollicular and it was not abolished in ischemic disrepression. Local anesthetic, when applied to the motor nerve, local anesthetic blocks the small neurons. The gamma motor neurons are a small neurons than the alpha motor neurons, and that abolished the intracollicular section. Whereas the ischemic, it was not abolished because it is the alpha motor neuron. Alpha motor neurons have a large diameter. Uh, these diameters may be around the 16 to 20 microns. Chloropromogene, which diminishes the gamma motor neuron activity, that abolished the intracollicular section, and the ischemic was not abolished. Stimulation of the descending tract, which increases the gamma motor neuron activity, enhanced the intracollicular rigidity, and it did not enhance the intracollicular rigidity. Anterior cerebellectomy or cooling enhanced in case of the intracollicular, and here in ischemic it did not enhance because already it is um, damaged. It is damaged. Vestibulectomy or vestibular neurectomy did not abolish here in the intracollicular uh, uh, sectioning, but abolished the, the rigidity in, um, in ischemic, uh, these things. So these are some of the differences between the intracollicular and uh, ischemic decerebration. Uh, now, uh, for your information, this is uh, taken from Genong. I, uh, I, I, I just want to give you a feel of this thing. A is the a decerebration a plus b is the relaxation of extensor muscle rigidity with the root sectioning this is a plus b so that means a dorsal root sectioning a plus c a plus c c is the cerebellectomy here enhancement of a decerebrate rigidity decerebrate rigidity because of this uh, inhibitory effect is lost then a plus c plus b a plus c plus b no relaxation of t cerebrate rigidity because A plus C plus B, the A plus C is meeting through the uh, alpha alpha motor neurons. So that is what ischemic uh, decerebration does. D, in the D, the flexion of the upper limb, extension of the lower limb, and a decorticate rigidity and posture. The, the, the D in this animal preparation, this is a, a decorticate preparation that I would be dealing in the subsequent uh, class. Now, I have already mentioned. Now, to summarize the decerebrator preparations, what is the feature of the decerebrate preparation? And before we consider the feature of the decerebrate preparation, what is the normal animal is having? Normal animal is having the higher functions. So that means it runs away. It, or uh, it, if you have uh, taken this cat as a pet, it will listen to you. You can uh, establish conditioned reflex in this cat. 
and the emotional that that means it will be either uh, uh, when you catch all or uh, when you try to reach there it may give you or a wag tail or uh, uh, try to come around with you or um, um, or make a uh, angry or a anger show the anger or aggression the locomotor reflexes are uh, moving they are normal in normal animal writing reflexes they can stand up they can move they can when they fall they can correct so all those writing reflexes are present anti gravity reflexes are present respiration okay maintained the spinal reflexes are normal so this is a normal rat, cat now in the decerebrate cats uh, higher functions are absent because uh, uh, entire brain area is been disconnected the cortex is disconnected the higher functions are absent the condition no you cannot have the conditioned reflexes because nothing is left with the nothing to hold down so conditioned reflexes requires uh, the cortical these things uh, that means uh, tuning of uh, just like uh, thinking about uh, uh, the uh, the pebble of the dog salivating to the uh, call of a bell so ringing of the bell uh, produces the salivation that is uh, that means uh, ringing of the bell is a sound sound has to be registered in the auditory cortex from the auditory cortex uh, it should send the inputs to the autonomic system and to the hypothalamus it should come there and will produce the uh, secretion of the saliva from the salivary glands so that type of a conditioning is absent the emotions are absent because the emotion requires the presence of the limbic system and hypothalamus and the autonomic locomotor reflexes they require a midbrain structures because already your lesion is below the midbrain writing reflexes writing all the writing reflexes are centered in the the midbrain so hence they are not here i have mentioned in this cerebral cortex cerebral cortex so what is governing the emotional the limbic system and hypothalamus locomotor reflexes thalamus and midbrain and writing reflexes midbrain is the center anti gravity reflexes yes they are exaggerated they are exaggerated and they are seen they are in the ponto medullary area respiration is normal because the respiratory centers are not affected and in these animals uh, there is what is called hypertonia because the extensor rigidity the extensor hypertonia there is a spasticity uh, that is uh, mediated in the uh, spinal cord now so with this uh, i just uh, conclude Uh, i will uh, i will just mention about uh, the cerebral rigidity i have described uh, the the classical and uh, the uh, ischemic decerebration uh, for your benefit so now i have already given all these things you may not find all of them in a given uh, space now what is the assignment i would like to give you uh, after listening to this lecture i want that you should write down you should write down uh, if you have taken my message uh, on the other day lecture wherein you have a large uh, weightage for the nervous system and uh, please don't take the nervous system as a light and you try to write these assignments uh, in the point wise and if you are not following you are free to contact so now today's essay type of question is uh, describe the effects of sectioning the intracollicular levels briefly describe the features of this preparation and explain the basis of rigidity and exaggerated tendon reflexes okay that's one then hind brain animal hind brain animal is again a decerebration serington or classical decerebration this is the same thing so you need not to write again and again these two are same hind brain animal is same just for your sake i am just giving you a serringtonian decerebration or a classical decerebration mid collicular decerebration intercollicular decerebration they are one and the same then ischemic decerebration you mentioned how it is performed i have given now you mentioned the basis of muscle rigidity in ischemic and the mid collicular uh, decerebration these are the assignments and uh, my books are uh, the mostly the samson right and uh, the uh, candles neuroscience and 
the other books uh, maybe the best chanteelars and the starlings uh, uh, textbook of physiology uh, these books are not available to you but anyway i have uh, this uh, whatever the concepts uh, were all brought about after reading uh, uh, many of those original uh, papers okay the ba basis is mainly from the uh, samson writes applied physiology with this thing uh, what i will do in the next class on wednesday i will talk about the decorticate preparation and other lesions of the nervous system because uh, i wanted to i wanted to take the entire lesions that could have taken a very very long time and uh, you, i wanted to give you in a piece meal okay with this thing uh, in the next class i will tell about uh, decorticate preparation and uh, other lesions and uh, during that time i will also discuss about the decorticate and decerebrate uh, uh, differences okay with this thing uh, have a nice evening and uh, thank you all